Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you to our special guest today, Patrick Andrade. He's here with us from the Chicago Lighthouse. And he is the Assistive Technology and Accessibility Manager at the Chicago Lighthouse. And it's so glad to have you with us today, Patrick. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Renee. Can you tell us a little bit about the Chicago Lighthouse? I know that it's a mainstay in Chicago for, for many years. Yeah, the Chicago Lighthouse is a nonprofit organization that helps people who are blind, visually impaired, non, uh, multi-disabled, and veterans. And so we've been around since 1906. We consider ourselves over 100 years young, and we are uh, constantly trying to improve our community. Um, we currently have locations in our uh, the UIC Chicago Medical District, one in the northern suburbs in Glenview, and another where I'm currently am. We have a satellite location in uh, Osmore uh, in the um, U Chicago at Ingalls Clinic. And so we have about 40 different programs, some of them which are our Children's Development Center, our low vision clinic, our employment services, our adult living skills, and more. Can you tell us a little bit more about your role at the Lighthouse? Of course. So at the Lighthouse, I am a part of the low vision clinic. And what we like to practice is what we call a comprehensive low vision rehabilitation. And that is where people go in first to see the low vision optometrist. And from there, they're recommended to see um, occupational therapists, low vision psychiatrists, and people like myself, assistive technology specialists. And so I see people and um, evaluate them in assistive technology consultations and help them find uh, tools that can improve their everyday lives. That sounds very comprehensive. Oh yeah. <laughs> And this issue is so dear to my heart, it really is, so that everyone has the ability to do the best they can and be able to see. So while Patrick is working on displaying um, his visuals, I just wanted to point out that we're gonna have a little time at the end of this presentation for questions and to also let everyone know that when the recording is ready, it will be available on our YouTube channel at schombergliberary.tv. So take it away, Patrick. All right, so today we will be talking about the role of low vision evaluations in the process of determining the best technology to meet an individual person's needs, the latest assistive technology devices, and including different kinds of features in your everyday devices that you might not consider assistive technology and different kinds of questions and answers that you might have and that I might have. So to start, are all eye exams the same? I just touched on this a little bit. Uh, you might have op optometrists and ophthalmologists. And so that's how you can get a comprehensive eye exam. These are where you evaluate the health of the visual system with the battery of different tests. The, they will determine the refractive status. They may determine the cause of vision loss and this should always precede vision rehabilitation. Now, when starting with a low vision examination, that is to evaluate function and recommend appropriate rehabilitation strategies and accommodations, whether that be magnification, auditory or tactile um, uh, <clears throat> devices, pardon me. Um, and so that uh, whatever may be recommended can be uh, help guide the assistive technology specialist in selecting appropriate technologies to try. And in the low vision examination, we um, evaluate the remaining functional vision of a person with permanent vision impairment, uh, correlate the symptoms with the diagnosed pathology, identify any remaining visual areas that can be exploited in vision rehabilitation, as well as any barriers to the usefulness of those areas and evaluate the assistive devices and services to aid in rehabilitation and improve function. So although I'm talking about low vision examinations, it's still important for those who are blind to be able to have these types of exams. Um, and that's because people who are blind are near total 
uh, should get uh, ocular health exams because blind eyes can still develop further pathology, which may lead to blindness and pain, such as intraocular tumors. And as well as this is how they could get follow-up on rehabilitative, rehabilitative services. So additionally, if vision is severely limited, it might be harder for a patient to self-detect and report the conditions of their symptom. And if there is a vision change or even if a change in the ocular appearance, it's important to stay up to date on different research opportunities for maybe new treatments that could be applicable to the patient, such as Luxterna, an FDA approved genetic therapy for RPE 65, and new developments in assistive technology that can be shown at these exams, such as um, an assistive mobility aid like the WeWalk navigation cane. Now, when I see a patient, I like to consider the adjustment to their loss, the expectations that the patient might have, their motivation the family and support system, cause of vision impairment and prognosis, vision requirements and goals, age, station in life, overall health, cognitive level, other physical impairments. And when it comes to assistive technology, unfortunately, um, uh, ability to uh, finance these devices. So assistive technology can be um, split into two categories. So assistive technology is any item or system or modification used to help improve function, off the shelf, modified or customized. Really easy example of this is a bump dot. So one of those dots that you could place on your microwave to help you find the 30 second button or maybe the start button. An adaptive device um, or technology is a subcategory of these assistive devices um, and it's devices designed specifically for a person with a disability. So most of these devices um, are adaptive devices that we'll be referring to. So in an assistive evaluation, I like to meet with the client to determine needs and goals, first of all, and then show a breadth of different items that can be showcased so various features can be demonstrated because it's really about the features that make the device matter. So items can then be narrowed down based on the necessary features and the feedback of the person. If a device is chosen, a plan for implementation can be finalized and can be, um, if it's a student, it can be evaluated for progress upon implementation followed with thereafter with their teacher or if it's not a student, it could be, just be followed up with, with the person themselves. So patient factors can include want first need of functionality, um, preference for discreteness, such as social acceptance. A lot of times for um, teenagers, it might, uh, it might be difficult to have a, a large device utilized within the school environment based on need or want for social acceptance. Um, whether or not uh, tablet utilization for software integration. We'll talk about that later on with different kinds of devices that are similar to tablets, um, whether or not a distance mode is necessary, and the acuity in the field of vision um, in determining magnification versus optical character recognition, which is OCR. And optical character recognition is where it scans the text and allows you and displays it for you from the paper. There's different kinds of low vision devices, such as handheld magnifiers or portables, desktop CCTVs, um, camera arm CCTVs, wearables, readers, and devices that read aloud. So handheld electronic magnifiers are easy to use, transportable, have smaller screens. Two examples of them are the Explore 5 and Explore 8, as shown in the photos. A desktop CCTV is um, for traditional desktop workstations, they normally have much larger screens, trays such as an XY tray for easier use um, for reading. They're either luggable or stationary, have really stronger magnification than the portable devices, um, and occasionally have tablet capabilities and OCR features, so ability to scan the text and read it aloud. Camera arm CCTVs uh, have an overhead arm that can either be stationary or portable, meaning it can be detached from a monitor. They allow for a greater area for tasks and the rotatable camera can also offer self-viewing or distance viewing. Wearable devices are devices that are normally head-borne. They offer greater freedom, greater freedom with hands amid tasks. They can provide magnification for daily tasks and provide text-to-speech capabilities through OCR as well. And there's readers, which are text-to-speech capable um, devices through the OCR technology. There um, can either be in luggable desktops or portable devices. In the upper right corner, we have an example of one that we'll take a look at reader later called the OrCam Read. And each device of, of each reader device can have a different um, voice and level of intonation to it, which makes each one different for every person. 
So to start, we have the Explore 5. This is a nice device that's really great for helping me determine uh, and, and start, see where a person is when moving from optical devices, glass magnifiers, to electronic portable magnifiers. So in the video, I'm demonstrating the, the buttons and their features. So you can zoom in with the top right button. You can zoom out with the middle um, button on the right side. And it also has uh, four modes of use. So the current one that's being shown is on the tabletop mode. So where you can drag, uh, move the device across the page and read the uh, printed text. So it offers up to 22 times magnification. Um, it's nice in that it's a five inch LCD screen with this sharp camera with autofocus. And it offers um, plenty of different color contrast modes. It's very durable, um, made of aluminum, and it also offers a gallery capability. So you can take photos, um, you can freeze the image, and you can go into the gallery and take a look at your different photos. There's four modes of use. Um, the overhead view where you just take it out of your pocket and turn it on and just hold it up to something, take a look. There is the view with the tabletop, which is currently being displayed. There is the um, view with the handle where you can hold something in your hand, hold the handle just like a regular handheld magnifier and take a look at whatever you may need to look at. And there's also the dual mode. So the tabletop with the handle combo where you can have the handle out and also have it flat on the table and drag the handle around on the page. So this device is about $625. Um, this is really kind of the starting point for devices when they start at about five inches um, for portable electronic magnifiers. Moving on to the Clover 6, this is a slightly larger screen, five and a half inches. It has anti-glare to it. It's a matte touchscreen with magnification levels from 1.5 times to 35 times. In the video, I'm showing how ultra thin it is. It's one of the thinnest um, devices that's on the market. Uh, and currently showing how you can zoom in and zoom out with the buttons that are on the front, on the right side. From the top, you have a capture button to take a photo. You have the zoom in button and then the zoom out button. On the left side, I'm currently displaying the different kinds of color contrast modes that are capable. So you have a button for changing color contrast and you also have a color button. So if you wanna look at your text and all of a sudden come across a photo, you can press the color button and it'll quickly change to your color. You wanna go back to your text, you press the, the color contrast button, it goes back to your reading text color. It also has lines and blinds as being displayed in the video and the ability to freeze the frame, um, capture an image and also save it to a gallery. What's nice about um, it is it has the handle, so it can be used like a magnify glass, and it's also lefty friendly. So it has a distance camera. This makes it really nice and different from the Explore 5 because it's capable of zooming in um, from a distance. And it also has in the gallery, the ability to um, add a, uh, an audio uh, description to your image that you take. So if I took a photo of the magazine image, I could then save the photo and say, this is a photo of a magazine. So that device is about 795. And moving on, we have a device that's 995 and that is the Explorer 8. So this is uh, what I like to call the big sister to the Explorer 5. Um, it's an ultra HD eight inch screen with magnification up to 30 times. Um, it's nice and thin and it comes with a nice um, case to be able to um, put in your purse or your bag. Um, it's compact, lightweight, and super portable. So it goes all the way up to 30 times magnification, has three simple buttons on the very front, one for zooming out, one for zooming in, and the center one for changing the color contrast. It's also touchscreen, so you can zoom in with your fingers um, by pinching and pulling. So in the video, I'm currently um, showing it go across the page uh, so you can read text um, by just dragging it across your text it's in the tabletop mode in addition to um, its tabletop mode it also has a distance capability if you collapse the device and zoom in on what you have in the distance 
then it can magnify on any kind of poster, text, what have you, image, object um, that might be in the distance from you. So what's nice about this one from the other one is it's USB type charger, although that might not mean a lot. It does mean a lot for people who are blind and visually impaired because with the Mac micro USB charger, there's only one correct way to put it in, which means there's one way which can break it. With the USB-C type charge, there's no incorrect way to plug it into charge. Moving on to the big, big sister of the HumanWare Explorer 5 and HumanWare Explorer 8, um, we have the Explorer 12. So this is a, uh, I have a video here with some- Have reading, writing, looking sound. at pictures and other enjoyable tasks become difficult? HumanWare introduces the Explore 12, the largest of the Explore line of portable video magnifiers. Explore 12 is an easy to use electronic magnifier with superb HD image quality that enhances both near and distance viewing, allowing you to do the things you want. Its lightweight and elegant design makes it an ideal tool to help you magnify your active lifestyle. With its 12 inch touchscreen, the Explore 12 is the perfect magnifier for anyone who wants a larger interface for reading, writing, painting, drawing, and so much more. The built-in folding stand allows you to read comfortably and appreciate every visual detail with magnification of up to 30 times. Ergonomically well-placed buttons at the bottom edge also ensure easy zoom, in and out, as well as access to desired visual settings customization. When used with its portable folding reading stand, Explore 12 is stable and perfectly positioned, with plenty of room to read, write, do self-grooming, or perform other manual tasks. With live panning, you can zoom in and out, then pan across a book to read more easily without having to move it. And you can choose from many color enhancements to increase visual contrast at the touch of a button. With a lightweight design and 3.5 hour battery life, it's an ideal companion for maintaining your active lifestyle wherever you are, at home or on the go. Explore 12 is not only easy to carry, but also very simple to use. Just pull it out of your bag, turn it on, and it's ready when you are. The Explore line of video magnifiers delivers the independence you desire to perform all your daily tasks and to engage with the world around you. So what's nice and different about this one is it has an optional stand for writing capability. Um, and in, when it's in the stand, it has um, the optional capability for panning. So I could zoom in and I could drag my finger from the left and the right and be able to see the text that I might be missing because I'm magnified but it will still get all, show all of the text that it can show from two times magnification from when it's in the stand. So it's got those two integrated cameras. And what's nice about it compared to the Explore 8 is the distance camera has a more comfortable viewing angle. So instead of having to hold it up bright, you can just hold it downwards and the camera actually shoots straight out rather than um, pointing downwards at the floor. So moving on to um, C desktop CCTVs, one of the nicest and most intuitive ones that I, I know of is the Mezzo. So this one is, I apologize, I wrote the price is wrong. It's um, for a 20 inch version, it's 2,595. And for a 24 inch version, it's 2,895. And so um, these are very intuitive because they have three controls that are really easy to operate. Um, they're just three dials. So on the front, from the left, you have the color contrast dial. In the center, you have a magnification dial. And on the right, you have a brightness dial. It also has two different levels for, um, for uh, LED lighting and has a movable mo monitor for ergonomic reading posture. The two sizes really allow for those who are looking for maybe a smaller desktop CCTV or one that can provide much greater viewing area. Um, and it also has an XY tray, which is really, really great and important for a smooth reading uh, capability. Going on to a camera, uh, a CCTV that's like a camera arm, we have the Acrobat devices. So these come in three different types. So there's the Acrobat Ultra, which can vary in price from 2,400 to 3,250. 30, um, it comes attached, the camera arm comes actually attached to the monitor from screen size of 20 inches to 27 inches. These cameras that are attached to the, uh, either attached to the monitor or detached, that can be attached to a, connected to an external monitor TV, 
Um, the cameras have a three-in-one camera for either self-viewing, tabletop viewing, or distance viewing. So either if you're someone who um, is in need of uh, doing their makeup in the morning, or someone who maybe sits very far from the TV and wants to put it on a TV stand and magnify it onto the TV from far away, you can do that. Uh, you can do a lot of different things um, as, as long as um, you're, it's necessary for magnification. And so the Acrobat long arm is different from the short arm in that it offers a greater viewing area and flexibility for tasks. Going on to the Compact 10, um, this device has recently just gone up in price due to shipping. Um, it's a $1,675. It's a large 10 inch touchscreen there's no tactile buttons in three camera modes, um, one for overview, one for desktop, which is currently being displayed in the video, and one with a side camera and full page, which will be shown at the end. So in the video, currently taking a photo of the text, so you can zoom in, zoom out, save the photo, do whatever you want with it. Um, it also has OCR and text-to-speech capability. Um, this can be, the device can either be put into an easy mode or into an advanced mode, and it magnifies from 0.5 times up to 22 times the magnification. So because it's fully touchscreen, it offers no tactile buttons other than the power button. Um, similar to uh, portable electronic magnifiers, it offers the ability to save photos. Um, it's different in that it offers the benefits of a larger uh, screen portable magnifier with the added advantage of OCR. So the o OCR op offers the option of scanning, listening to, and reading along with your printed text. So once your text is scanned, it's converted into large print font that could be increased or decreased in size as well as changed in color. So for, pri for privacy, it offers Bluetooth capabilities as well as an audio Pride jack. And prejudice chapter one, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife, however little known the feelings or views of such a man may be on his first entering. So going back to the OCR, there is a full page mode. Um, and the full page mode for OCR reading, which gives you much greater text feedback than you would have had if the device only scanned in its normal reading mode while sitting on top of the page. So it not only scans and performs text-to-speech on an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper, but it also can be utilized as a magnifier to perform writing tasks similar to that on a desktop CCTV. So to review, this device is portable, but also offers text-to-speech capability for those who cannot fully benefit from increased magnification and also offers writing mode capability similar to that of a desktop CCTV. Now, last but not least, displaying the overview mode where you can collapse the legs and zoom in on things that are possibly in the distance or in front of you. All right, so the OrCam read has two camera modes, a box mode, a cursor mode, and has a red laser shoot onto the surface and is best for those with reading difficulties or moderate to mild low vision. Uh, so it's, um, it's good because it, it takes photos of the text. It doesn't save any of these photos. It's no bigger than the size of a pen um, and it is about as thick as a marker. It's nice because it only has four simple buttons, it is very portable. Um, on the top of the device, it has one button for power that shows four different lights or based on how charged it is. Um, from the front and back, it has a circular button for capturing the photo, a plus button for raising the volume or fast forwarding in the text when it's reading, a minus button for lowering the volume or rewinding in the text while it's reading. So currently displaying the uh, cursor mode where it takes a photo of a specific area by pointing just a cursor out in the form of a red laser onto the, onto the surface. Now also displaying the box mode where it displays um, what looks more like a picture frame to me, four corners, um, uh, in red outline onto the page, it can really get about a half page of text. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin was born on January 17th, 1706 in Boston, Massachusetts. He was the youngest of 13 children and entered school at the age of eight. Benjamin did very well. So there's an example of fast forwarding. Brother James Print Shop, 
hand rewinding. So that was an introduction of a device that starts to read aloud um, along with the Compact 10. So going into other devices that read aloud, we have the Cloverbook Lite Plus or Pro. So the Lite is different in that it only does magnification. Um, the Plus is different in that it does magnification plus distance magnification. And the Pro does all of the features, including OCR and text-to-speech. So to show the video, the Cloverbook Pro is a 12 and a half inch FHD screen um, with 1080p um, camera and matte touchscreen with that goes from one times to 60 times magnification. It has different kinds of color contrasts. Um, it has a butt um, in the form of a dial. You can change, uh, turn the dial to change the color contrast. It has a button to push in on the color contrast to go back to color mode. It has the capabilities of panning up, down, left, and right while you're magnified. So it's different from the Explorer 12 and the Explorer 12 can only pan to the left and the right. The Cloverbook can pan left, right, up, and down, either using the control on the very front or using the touchscreen. So it has the discrete fold-out camera for distance that can go from, that can do either a self-viewing mode or distance viewing mode. It can go from one times to 18 times. So in the video, I'm demonstrating how, we're demonstrating how magnified it can go on while zooming in, in, in the distance. It also offers the ability for split screen capability. This is great for students that might be in a classroom and need to magnify on the board while also magnifying their printed text or their notes. So here I'm, uh, we are doing an example of the text to speech. Press the text to speech button while zooming in on some text and it will read it aloud. How to live life to the fullest with safety, efficiency, dignity, and fun. So that's an example of the voice. You, there's two ways to view it. You can view it regularly or you can transcribe it into its uh, high contrast print. You can, it also offers a full page text-to-speech mode. So we can put our entire document out onto the surface, either press the text button on the touch screen seminar topics. or press seminar the tactile button. I'm gonna switch views. To vision loss travel and transportation, health and wellness, communication and technology, recreation and leisure, arts and hobbies, make the most of So this is a great device for people that need to do writing, near, um, near view tasks or uh, magnified reading as well as have um, text-to-speech and OCR. Moving on to the Connect 12. Applications, quick access, calculator, books. Magnifier. So the Connect 12 is a compact full C CTV that's the size of a laptop. It can be taken from class to class. It has full tablet capabilities such as internet and Android applications. It can get textbooks directly to it, so great for students. It has OCR functionality. And can, you can also purchase a external distance camera so that you can help focus on a chalkboard, whiteboard, or any presentations that might be in the front of a room or a board office. So the angling of the documents for this one can be tricky, and it's all touchscreen, so it might be limiting to some users. However, because it is an Android tablet, it has full Android talkback capabilities, which we'll talk about later. So here's it scanning a full page of text, and we'll have it read it aloud. Quick overview. Point weight an extremely portable 12.2 inch full HD touch screen. So that's an example of the Connect 12. And in with the Reveal 16, this is similar to the Connect 12, very similar, but more stationary. It's more of a CCTV. It's a 16 inch screen and it can be transported, but not as easily as the Connect. It's very much luggable rather than portable. Um, so it has a larger screen than the Connect 12, has tablet capabilities just like the other one, and the distance camera is built in rather than having it um, be an external distance camera. So because the distance camera is built in, um, its drawback is that it can't be utilized in a split screen like the Connect 12 can or like the Cloverbook can. You cannot view the board and your notes at the same time. 
um, because the camera for the distance camera for the the camera for the tabletop viewing is the same as the distance camera. What's nice about this one is it has more tactile buttons, but it also has a touch screen. But again, that touch screen can be utilized completely easily by people who are fully blind. Um, however, someone who is fully blind wouldn't need a device that magnifies. So moving towards the Patriot Pro, this is a kind of device that's great uh, if someone is looking for um, something similar to the Connect 12, however, they're more of an Apple product user. So this is really just an iPad Pro with a 12.9 inch screen. It's one of the first assistive technology devices that's to use Apple products. Um, and so it is has a video magnifier for desktop as well as distance, um, has OCR and text-to-speech capability, as well as voiceover capability. So that is the way to utilize your uh, iPad so that um, if you're fully blind, you could be able to use it, um, or just um, legally blind, we should say. Um, so the camera at the lower right corner of the is at the lower, the camera is at the lower right corner of the device. So that does make it a little bit more difficult to use. The uh, pad that's given below the tablet isn't actually as useful as it would be for the Clover book, where you can just stretch the full page out onto the pad. Here, since the camera is at the lower right corner, the paper goes in the lower right corner, kind of off of the pad side. So it's a little bit more difficult to navigate. Next, we have the MagnaLink tab. So this is a device that's similar to our Patriot Pro and our Connect 12. However, what's different about this one is it's a Microsoft Surface 12.3 inch touchscreen tablet. And so that tablet is attached to a sidearm camera that has built-in OCR. Now this uh, tablet has Windows 10 functionality. I imagine now these days it's going up to Windows 11. And what's great about that is it allows for high performance computing. So if you're a student that's in need of a Windows computer, but also wants to keep your assistive device all in one with your Windows computer, this would be a great option. Um, you can uh, have one device for the classroom. You don't need a, a computer and um, a device that can magnify for you with another screen. You can just have one simple screen. What's great about this one is because it's Windows, it offers the ability to install the third-party softwares that many people use on their computers to help them utilize them uh, more proficiently, such as Zoom Text or JAWS, which we will talk about later. The DaVinci Pro is a great device for seniors. Um, it has a three-in-one camera. It's a full 1080p HD, um, offers three different viewing capabilities with tabletop view, a self viewing as well as a distance viewing. It goes all the way up to 77 times magnification, probably more than anyone would ever need and offers full page text to speech and OCR, um, which is also very easy to use with the console that can be attached. It can be put into a simple mode or an advanced mode. And this device can also be uploaded with games and connected as an external monitor to your Mac, to your laptop. So the Iris Vision is a device that offers um, flexibility with magnification. Um, and we've got two videos here showing two different uh, ways that the iris vision can be used. So two different modes. So we've got an RP mode. This is great for people with retinitis pigmentosa. And so what it does is it allows them to um, change the field of view so that it can go within their own field of view. So we'll take a look at Tom Persky demonstrating this here today. Some small field of view from a viewer clock, just say R so here on the wall, I have kind of a collage of an old classic car. So it, it's about three and a half or four feet wide uh, with these three different little pictures. And so to be able to, with normal vision, to see all three of them with macular disease, of course, you would zoom in to want to make it bigger. But with the RP mode, the ability to put your finger on the touchpad and go slightly down very slowly and so as you're taking the whole scene you're virtually pushing it out into space so that someone with let's say a 30 degree field of view which is about right here would be able to see the whole unit 
also if I went down to So that's an example of RP and how this device can benefit those with RP um, by decreasing the field of view of the image and allowing for magnification um, in addition to that. Next, we have a bioptic viewing mode. The bioptic mode here is configured with a rectangle in the center of the screen with a 70 degree view below. So you know the context of what you're looking at here, some books and CDs on a shelf. The top part is the rectangular magnification area. So for instance, with these books, if I wanted to uh, read them, now I'm three or four feet away, but I could still read them by placing the uh, bioptic rectangle in the area and then with my fingers zooming in. So I can see now read the uh, Monet and um, so forth. So the way I can do that is change this. So for instance, if I got closer to these books, I wouldn't need to zoom in quite as much. I could go back and forth. So this bioptic uh, view really gives a person the ability to change the power or the magnification power uh, on the fly throughout the day, depending on what uh, they're looking at. All right, and so that's an example of the Iris Vision. It's, that is actually the old version of the Iris Vision. Um, it's still on the market. However, they've come out with a new version. They're currently trying to bring all the features from the old one onto the new one, but they're still in the process. Currently, they only have um, on this new feature, a scene mode, a reading mode, a television mode, a uh, RP mode, as well as YouTube. So this um, design of the Iris Vision is more aesthetically pleasing. It's lighter in weight, pardon me. And what they did is instead of uh, continuing to use the Microsoft Oculus goggles, in putting the Samsung phone in the very front. They created their own goggles that were more aesthetically pleasing and lighter in weight that has its own camera. And those goggles actually connect and are tethered to um, a phone, another Samsung phone. However, this time the phone doesn't get put in the very front of the goggles, creating even more weight on the goggles and even more weight on your head. This time the phone can either be slipped into your pocket or hung around your neck um, on a lanyard. And so although you are tethered to your phone, the device is much uh, lighter in weight and more aesthetically pleasing. It looks kind of like uh, some wraparound glasses that cover the sides. And so uh, they are in the process of uh, receiving similar features as the Iris Vision Live. The eSight 4 is um, a device where it has features where you can move between TV, reading, indoor, outdoor, and custom vision modes, can go all the way up to 24 times magnification. It's different from the rest in that it has a halo comfort band design. So it's designed for all day comfort and use. It has two batteries that can be um, put into the backside. So the weight is in the back of the head rather than in the front. And um, the batteries can be switched out so you can charge one while you're using another. Um, it's wireless and hands-free, but also has, with built-in controls, but also has a remote um, for easy use. And it fe um, features connection to smartphone for taking and sharing your photos or for streaming your TV, phone, or computer directly to your eSight. So here's an example of a video of the eSight. Meet eSight 4 the most advanced enhanced vision device for people who are legally blind that's ready for life on the go. Delivering best visual acuity and superior mobility, eSight 4 is incredibly easy to use, helping people with low vision see new possibilities, from attending school, advancing in their career, to enjoying the outdoors. Based on eSight's clinically proven breakthrough vision principles, eSight 4 combines best match camera and lens technology with advanced sensors and proprietary algorithms to maximize the quality of information sent to the brain, dramatically augmenting sight. Wireless and hands-free with built-in vision controls, eSight 4 maintains 100% use of natural peripheral vision 
and includes patented bioptic tilt technology, making it the most versatile device for life on the go. The Halo Comfort Band adjusts to the perfect fit, and the Easy Swap Back Battery offers perfect weight distribution for all day carefree wearing and use. A Class 1 medical device, wearers experience immediate enhanced vision and graduated learning makes using advanced controls like 24 times zoom easy. Cloud-based, wearers can take pictures and videos and share them with their smartphone, stream in HD from their phone or TV directly to their e-site, and invite loved ones to see what they see and help customize their experience. It's time to see new possibilities with e Next, we have the Vision Buddy, which is another form of a wearable device. This one is different in that it's ultra simple, an ultra simple television watching system for those with low vision. So you essentially plug the streaming device into your existing cable TV box or other TV providers, such as your Roku or your Amazon Fire Stick, what have you. And it has three modes. One of them is the live mode for viewing things around you, the television mode for watching television, in the reading mode, which also offers a built-in OCR feature, so you can take a photo of the text that's in front of you and it can read it back to you. So the TV mode is different in that it, it, instead of magnifying onto the television that's in front of you, you have the television transmit directly into the goggles. And so you're kind of creating your own IMAX surround uh, experience, um, IMAX movie experience, where you can zoom in on the TV itself so you can watch while laying down, you can watch while standing up, uh, you can watch while sitting down or facing completely in the different direction from the TV. What, uh, it does have about a two and a half second delay. They're getting it towards about a one second delay from the television. So you can get some earplugs to plug in so that if you are watching with other people, it won't bother them that you are about two and a half seconds behind them um, and you can still, uh, watch TV with people just a little bit further behind. Next is the A-Sight. This is um, a device that has two full HD displays that float in front of each eye with a camera that auto focuses and can magnify up to 15 times. It's more of an augmented reality device where it can it has an attached to the handheld controller that adjusts the magnification level, the colors, as well as the contrast. It's suited for those within the visual acuity of 20 over 100 to 20 over 800, and is perfect for viewing faces and objects, watching TV, playing cards, moving about in familiar areas. So when it comes to mobility with these devices, um, a lot of times they say you're able to move about when it doesn't cover your peripheral vision. Um, however, it is important to keep in mind that um, it isn't completely safe to be walking around with these devices on because they do, um, unless you're in a familiar area because they do uh, cover uh, what a lot of, they give uh, a different kind of sense of placement um, as to where you are. And so a lot of times people can trip up or what have you. Last but not least for wearable devices, we have the Oxite Onyx. So this is a device that I actually haven't seen yet, but I am I'm excited to see because it has a lower price point than any of the other wearable devices that are out there. It has tactile buttons, making it easy to navigate menus um, and uh, work with the different functions. It's lightweight, has an open design, meaning it has the open peripheral vision. So it's 75% 75 smaller, 75 smaller than its competitors. So it's in, um, nice and compact and won't be too cumbersome uh, for people that might not want such a large device on their head, understandable. Um, HD cameras streams live and lag-free video with up autofocus at up to eight times magnification. So it doesn't magnify as much as, let's say, the east side up to 24 times, but it does magnify um, at, a, at a medium uh, level. And so it has a visor for hands-free operation that can be removed um, for handheld magnification mode. This is Onyx from Oxide digital technology that improves sight for people with a visual impairment. If you suffer from central vision loss, this small lightweight device could transform your vision and transform your life. 
onyx provides a route back to the visual world, taking the strain out of everyday tasks, allowing you to read a book, watch TV, and to actually see long-forgotten faces. Today, 200 million people are living with central vision loss, including age-related macular degeneration, which means they can only view the world through peripheral vision. Using a tiny video camera and onboard image processing, Onyx projects the world you can't see to beam through your weaker area of central vision. At the same time, your peripheral vision remains clear and unobstructed, so you're free to walk around as normal. But it goes further. By using simple tactile buttons, you can zoom in, enhance images, making things like text easier to read. While the onboard AI technology will learn to detect objects and faces that are meaningful to you. It gives me more freedom, it gives me my independence instead of having to ask people um, to help me out. I feel confident to go into a shop on my own and I can go to the product that I need um, and I can go and buy it. Onyx has been ergonomically styled so it can be handheld or worn like a pair of glasses in a way that's lighter and less bulky than other less advanced solutions. Other products don't really cater for it really because you have to hold them up. And, you know, I want to be able to watch an ice hockey game and drink a beer or something like that. About eight out of 10 people who try our glasses on are able to read better. In some cases, it's like, you know, many times better reading than before. Uh, also, the ability to see faces, see objects in the distance. We can magnify things really huge. Uh, that's clearly been a benefit. And, and uh, so many people have commented to us that that's the type of thing that they have been looking for in their lives. Onyx is the latest in a range of products from Oxide, the specialists in smart glasses for the visually impaired. Originating from research at Oxford University, Oxide products are endorsed by international clinicians. I feel more of a person now than I have done in, in the years that I've had this condition, being able to read things, um, being able to see people. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and that is from the heart. <laughs> if you experience... All right. So that is um, our kinds of wearable devices. So if any of you have questions about these devices, well, I will be taking them at the end. And also, if you're interested in seeing any of these, we do carry them at the Chicago Lighthouse. And so I can never really make recommendations as to which one is the best. People always ask me that and want to know. Um, it's really going to be dependent on how you feel within the device and how what kind of um, difference it makes for you when with your vision. So moving on to types of devices for Braille or non-print readers, stick with me. We'll still also have devices at the end, such as like computers and iPads and such. So um, and features that are for accessibility on those. So haptic feedback. Um, haptic feedback is essentially a vibrational feedback that can be incorporated into various devices. So we see it with our cell phones with vibrate mode for alarm clocks for those who are deaf or hard of hearing, or maybe those who are just very heavy sleepers. And these days we see it in many wearable devices to help users better navigate. Um, haptic feedback is best used in tandem with traditional methods of uh, orientation and mobility, such as a cane or a guide dog. So two devices that have haptic feedback um, that are both wristbands, are both wristbands and can be worn by a user and can, connected to their smartphone. So the two that I'm mentioning today, the Weight Band and the Sunu Band, differ in their user goal in a critical way. So in this case of the Weight Band, the device creates a virtual corridor and plots your preferred pathway through the map on your smartphone. So when the user strays from the corridor, they'll re receive vibrational feedback telling them so. So it's much less about the obstacles as much as it is about performing successful navigation. This device was created um, with the concept of a blind marathon runner in mind who wanted to run a race um, without a, a human guide. So the other device is the Sunu band, which also contains haptic feedback using echolocation from up to 16 feet. So for this device, the vibrational feedback alerts the users to obstacles from within view, and its intensity is what informs the user of how far or near that object may be. So the position of the device on the wrist is meant to provide obstacle detection from the waist level up, and again, it should be used in tandem with a white cane or a guide dog. Now, a similar device to this is called a fuzz clip. And now 
uh, we have the WeWalk. So the last haptic feedback device I want to touch on is the WeWalk Smart Cane. It's a device that has echolocation sensor that provides haptic feedback for the user through the handle when faced with an obstacle at chest level or above. So it pairs with a free, uh, free app called WeWalk that has cane-friendly directions to any destination, as well as public transit integration with bus times and all. So essentially, the device combines the goals of the Wayband and the Sunu Band, successful navigation and obstacle detection, into one device. So the speaker on the cane can alert the user if they were to veer off course from their desired destination rather than through vibration. And again, this app is free, and I encourage people to download it. And next, I'd like to touch on Braille devices. So Braille devices uh, many times are Braille displays. Um, examples of Braille displays are below. So the Orbit 40 and the Orbit 20. Um, so these are refreshable and standalone Braille devices. A lot of times they're compatible with external devices like iPhones or computers, um, traditionally provided to students by the state rehab division or by the district, as well as provided um, to adults by um, DOORS, Department of Rehabilitative Services. So not every blind person reads Braille, which is why Braille devices aren't, um, aren't frequently found or com as common. So in one example of a Braille device or Braille display is the Braille Note, which is in the upper right corner of the screen. And this is a device that allows users, it's essentially a, a Braille computer. Um, so someone could surf the internet, um, do email, do look at their contacts, uh, type on a word processor, um, what have you. Anything that a computer can do, this device could do as well. Moving on to talking cell phones, um, ones that I am aware of and in, in, uh, carry are the Blind Shell and the Mini Vision 2. So the Blind Shell currently has three different versions. There's the Blind Shell Lite, um, which is more of the economical model. There is the Blind Shell Classic, uh, which is the older version, um, but it's still good, um, just has older hardware. Pardon me. And there's the Blind Shell 2, which is the latest model that has a much loud, louder speaker than any of the previous models and has a better tactile keypad for easier phone control. So what's great about these phones, um, well, with the light, there's no voice control or dictation and no internet connection, but there is emergency dial buttons. You can do speed dial and it's really easy to dial because of the tactile keypad. What's, what's rough about the phones that many um, cell phone carriers have, um, like flip phones that have the ability to talk aloud, um, is a lot of them have very flat surfaces. So none of them are tactile at all, making it really hard to be able to differentiate between the different buttons. Here, the buttons are separated. So although you might have a hard time finding um, the zero, you can always find the raised uh, dot on the five and navigate your way to zero. So with the Blind Shell Classic, um, although it's art older hardware, um, it does have voice control through simple commands as well as voice dictation. Um, it has an Android web browser and can also do things like object tagging. So if you um, say you want to tag a particular clothing item or tag a particular um, food item, you can say, this is my red sweater. Um, and every time the phone is tapped to that tag, it would say, this is my red sweater. And last but not least is the Mini Vision 2. So this is a phone that's uh, similar to the other ones. Uh, the only way that it's different is that you um, cannot automatically start, oh no. The only way that it's different is that you cannot, um, with the voice control, dial a, um, a number, you have to dial a contact. So I couldn't say um, dial 312-666-1331, uh, the lighthouse's number. I would have to have the lighthouse as a contact and say dial the Chicago lighthouse. Going over quickly devices that read aloud. So things like talking cell phones, there's talking calculators. There's a device like a, a device that reads aloud that calls the Smart Reader HD. There's the OrCam devices, the iBill, which is a talking banknote identifier, um, as well as a uh, Victor Reader Stream or Trek. And these are devices that can stream books um, into this little mini player, 
they're also great note takers. And the truck is one that also has built in GPS for um, navigating around. Going over the Enhanced Vision Smart HD, it's great for those with lots of printed text, tables, and columns. Um, has over 20 languages in natural male Health and sensing. female voices. It's fully tactile control buttons and easy to position documents. Smart Reader HD Quick Start Guide. Main functions. Tap to perform OCR. Scan tap again to return tap to home ready to, to scan do. page. Take a tap scan. to go to previous line. Tap to play, pause, or select item. Enhanced vision. A Vispro brand. Tap to return to previous menu item. Tap to go to next line. Done. So this item is portable and lightweight with a built-in battery. It is built in HD and OCR or text-to-speech. So if you can see in the video, in the back of behind the device is, it's connected to a TV screen and it's zooming in and currently zooming downwards. Um, uh, and uh, making the text smaller or bigger. You can also change the color contrast and change it from a black on white text to a white on black, uh, yellow on black, yellow on green, what have you. You can connect this to yeah, a monitor and view those 30 different color contrast modes. Here we have the OrCam MyEye Pro. So this is a device that has features such as simple text reading in a full page or specific area. Here I'm taking a photo by tapping the side of the device. And it reads my business card back to me. I held my hand up like a talk to the hand kind of uh, motion and it stopped reading. Next, I pointed to the text of my business card and it took a photo of where I was pointing. Here I am taking or looking at a bill and it tells me that it was $5 and then one told me another bill was $1. Next, I'm taking a look at a barcode, just show, uh, pulling it up to the, the device and taking a look at it. And it tells me what the, the product was. Next, I point, point to a color swatch and it told me that it was a gray blue area. And here is the smart reading feature. So I take a photo, smart say smart reading, and it takes a photo of all of the newspaper and we'll go ahead and um, scan it and allow me to interact with the text and ask it particular questions that read me the headlines. it can answer. So here I asked it to read me the headlines. It separates them into three different headlines. Second result, Chicago business. Third result, Allstate's Wilson takes a mulligan in his biggest deal yet. So next I could ask it to read me one of the particular articles and it would go ahead and read from that read article. the third article. And I just did the talk to the hand motion again to make it stop reading. Here I'm going to do another kind of smart reading feature called find, smart reading. where I could ask it to find a particular word within the document and it would scan the document for that word and tell me all the instances in which it found that word. So I don't even have to look at my document find after pandemic. I asked it to find the word pandemic. I thought it was only going to find one of the word, or I thought it was only going to find this one word, but it found two results actually. And last but not least, it has an orientation mode, which is in beta. So that's something that can identify uh, rate, um, stairs going upwards, uh, chairs, tables, TV screens, and cups. The Envision glasses and Envision AI app are kind of like a new competitor to the OrCam. So the Envision glasses are a Google Glass um, that's required to connect to a smartphone. Um, it has different features like scan text, instant text, batch scan, where you can take a bunch of different photos and have it read all of them. Um, export text, where you can take a photo of text and export it to your phone to be able to share that text um, with someone or, or yourself. Um, it has scene description, facial recognition, object recognition, color detection, and light detection. And so this, uh, these glasses are really paired to 
um, the Envision AI app. And so this app has similar features um, in addition to uh, a people finder where, which is really nice because sometimes um, if you're, uh, I, I've heard many stories of people who are blind just knowing that there's someone in the room, but no one answering because they feel like they don't have to. Um, and so just to be sure someone could take out their people finder, scan the room, and it, it could tell you if there's someone in the room. It also has a built-in magnifier. So if you're in need of a magnifier on your phone, it can um, zoom in and invert the color. All right, and last but not least, we're moving on to computer-based software and devices. So for um, Braille and non-print readers, these are screen readers like JAWS, NVDA, narrator, voiceover, and talkback. So these are the different kinds of things that allow you to use your computer or phone or what have you, your tablet with uh, maybe the screen even off um, and uh, allows people who are fully blind or near blind to be able to utilize uh, these devices proficiently. So many of these, uh, many of the computer-based software is, or many of the things are dependent on the user skill and the accessibility of the website. For example, if there's an image and someone is using a screen reader and they come across the image, if there is no alternative text, it will not tell them what the image is. It will just simply say image. Maybe it's an image of an apple. If someone put in some alternative text saying, this is a photo of an apple, then they would hear, this is a photo of an apple. Similarly, you hear about people who are blind not being able to use many websites. Um, a lot of times this is because particular buttons might not be labeled, maybe even on a website where you're trying to check out to buy a pizza. Um, the checkout button, if it's not labeled checkout, how are you able to say, as a sighted person, if there was no checkout label, how are you able to tell what to click on to be able to check out with your pizza? This is the same with um, uh, people who use screen readers. If there is no label for that button, then they won't be able to know to press on it. So it all comes down to compatibility and accessibility. And an example of a computer-based software is the JAWS screen reader. Going on to Windows computers and software. What's nice about all of this now is these are things that are uh, technologies that everyone uses, whether you are blind, visually impaired, or fully sighted. And so these uh, devices now have accessibility features um, that allow people to um, get a better experience with their computers or tablets or phones. So the built-in accessibility features under the ease of access settings for Windows computers, there's the Windows magnifier and Windows narrator. What's nice about the Windows, what's nice about the Windows magnifier is it has a feature called read from here. And so what that means is if you're able to see the photo on the right side, um, there is what looks like a mouse cursor with a um, volume or speaker icon next to it. And so if you were to click on that cursor or that icon or do the, the keyboard commands to enable it and then click on a piece of text somewhere, it would read that selected text aloud. And so what that means is it will read from wherever you click. That's great for people who might be able to navigate their screen um, but aren't able to easily read long uh, things of text because maybe uh, reading with magnification is too difficult, but they're still able to maneuver their screen with magnification and aren't in need of a screen reader as of yet. Um, so with Windows computers, there's lots of third-party software for accessibility rather than what's built in. There's ZoomText Magnifier and Reader, ZoomText Fusion, Dolphin Supernova, JAWS, NVDA, and Dragon Speech Recognition, which is uh, a software that's kind of like voice control, where someone could be able to use their computer and dictate um, and type, dictate uh, what they want to type rather than having to use the keyboard. Going on to Apple computers. So Apple computers have great accommodations. You'll find on the right side, there's a photo of the accommodations icon that you find um, within your Apple settings under accessibility. Um, it looks like the Da Vinci Vitruvian Man, um, but cartoon version. So it has, uh, Apple computers have display accommodations. Um, a couple of different ones are color inversion, increase of contrast, reducing transparency, changing the cursor size, 
and color filters. Um, so additionally, Apple computers have a zoom capability where you can magnify, zoom in on your text and make the screen um, a bit, uh, or, or and make what you're looking at a bit larger, or hover text where you can hold down a certain command key and when you hover over, over your text, the text will increase in size to whatever size you would like it to be increased to, all the way up to 128 point font, which is very big. So spoken content is, like I said, kind of like the read from here feature for the Windows computer. Um, it's where you can have, where you're on the verge between using um, the screen reading software and, um, but can still uh, utilize screen magnification. So you can have things like speak announcements, speak selection, where when you highlight text, they can uh, speak whatever is highlighted. You can have it speak items that go under your pointer, or you can have typing feedback. So if you're someone that struggles with uh, the keyboard and typing um, and are never sure if you're typing the right key, you can have typing feedback so that it'll say the key that you type immediately after you type it. Now the voice, uh, the screen reading software for Apple computers is called VoiceOver. There is also voice control, which is where you could um, utilize the computer by saying, asking it to do things like open up Safari, um, open up your calendar, or click a particular button, um, quit Safari, or what have you. So it, you can control your computer with your voice. Then there's dictation. So you can have a, key, a shortcut key where um, a lot of times if you double tap on the function key, um, it will start the dictation. And so you can then just talk to your computer and tell it what to type rather than having to deal with typing. And there's also Siri. So Siri can help you do things like set up appointments or um, send emails, what have you. Going on to Chromebooks, um, these uh, are great because they're very, very uh, economically friendly devices. Um, they do have accessibility features in them, like enhancing display and visuals. So you can use browser zoom, um, increase the display size, have a full screen magnifier or a docked magnifier, a large mouse cursor, change the font size, invert the color, or have a high contrast mode. They also have spoken feedback, like that select to speak feature um, that we've been talking about where you're on the verge between screen reading and screen magnification as well as the screen reading software, what they call Chromebox. And of course it has dictation as well. Now moving on to Android tablets and Android smartphones. These are tricky because their settings and their capabilities really vary depending on the phone brand as well as the current Android software. So what I've noticed is that as a Google Pixel user myself, Google Pixel Android phones do not really offer nearly as large of font options as Samsung Android phones. So on the right, um, and so Samsung Android phones offer things like um, an easy mode. So um, that's great for people who uh, want a smartphone but aren't maybe prepped for all of the capabilities of a smartphone. Um, whereas the Google Pixel Android doesn't offer that easy mode. Uh, so it, it, the settings and the, their capabilities will vary by the brand. Um, you can change the text and display. You can add a dark theme, bold text, what have you. You can change the magnification, add select to speak. Um, Google's ver or Android's version of screen reading software is called TalkBack. And there's plenty of Android apps out there. Um, I would be happy to share a list um, with the library of all the different accessible Android apps. And for Android phones, the one that I recommend the most is called Google Lookout. It's completely free. I also recommend Be My Eyes, Ira, Era, however you want to pronounce it, Envision AI, SuperSense, Speak, Speaking Email, WeZoom, Big Launcher, and TeamViewer. And so Be My Eyes is where you can connect with a person such as myself who speaks English and is willing, has the app downloaded as a volunteer and is willing to help people who are blind or visually impaired complete whatever task they call in to complete. Um, so you'll be connected crowdsourced to someone like myself and they would answer and help you complete that task using your uh, video call. Ira is similar to that, except you're connected to a professional within a call center that's specially trained to help people who are blind and visually impaired. And so that one costs money, 
um, you uh, basically buy minutes and it's free within different locations like Target, Starbucks, Walgreens, um, or even the city of Minneapolis, uh, and even federal buildings and airports. So that's great for helping you navigate. The only thing they really cannot do is tell you when across the street. Um, so there's Envision AI, which we've talked about earlier. SuperSense and Speak are great versions of Google Lookout, but cost money. Um, speaking email is a great way to access your email um, through um, spoken feedback only. Um, so you don't have to utilize your Google Talkback if you're someone who's low vision or and is um, unable to access their email even with magnification. There's WeZoom, which is a great free magnification app. There's Big Launcher, which has the capability of turning your phone into an easy to use phone. So say you have a Google Pixel Android and you don't have that easy mode that's on the Samsung Android, you can use uh, download Big Launcher and buy that and it'll turn your phone into um, a really easy to use uh, smartphone. And there's Team Viewer, which is great for if you're in need of help with your by your family or your friends, you can download Team Viewer and they can download Team Viewer and they can remotely connect into your devices. Going on to Apple, iPad and iPhones, there's features such as VoiceOver, which is that screen reading software, voice control, which we had talked about how you can use your um, Apple computer to be able to say open Safari, open mail, um, go home, what have you. There's speak selection, which is between magnification and voiceover, or zoom and voiceover. You can use speak selection where it can read selected areas aloud, whatever text you want it to read. Um, audio descriptions, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, voice dictation, where you can um, speak your text rather than typing it. Um, magnifier. So what's really nice is um, Apple has a built-in magnifier, whereas Android, you have to download that app WeZoom that I talked about. That's just one good example of a magnifier. Um, Apple has its own built-in magnifier app. So it also offers different kinds of display accommodations and adjustments, and additionally offers AirPlay and mirroring capabilities. So say you want to look at your iPad or your iPhone on a larger screen, you can AirPlay it to a larger screen using something like an Apple TV. So different applications for accessibility are Seeing AI. Um, Seeing AI is made by Microsoft. It's one of the best accessible apps that is out there. It's completely free. And um, it's one of the reasons why many people choose Apple I iPhones is because it has this app um, if you are blind and visually impaired. And, um, this app is really great. It offers things like text reading, color recognition, facial recognition, um, barcode detection, um, light detector, um, uh, handwriting reader, a lot of different capabilities. Um, also, the uh, various other apps that we had talked about for Android are also on iPhone. Just to go back and touch on this photo that I have in the center of my page called the scan. Uh, there's a thing called the scanner bin. It's really just a cardboard box. It's about $20. And what, what's great about it is using these different kinds of apps that I've been talking about, Google Lookout, SuperSense, Seeing AI, Envision AI, you can put your download those apps, open them up, put your phone on the top of the box where there is just a little cutout for your camera to, be, um, to view um, what the paper is within the box. And so you take a photo and it gives you a perfect orientation and display of um, your text that you want it to be, have read. And with those apps, you can have your text scanned and read back to you. So this is a really easy way to have an OCR reader for just $20 if you already have a smartphone. Touching on smart devices and assistance, a smart device is one that is connected through the internet or to the internet through Wi-Fi, and a TV is smart when it can connect to the internet, making it possible to do things like stream Netflix, Hulu, or others. So a smartphone is a kind of cell phone. It's usually one that is not tactile and is fully touchscreen. Uh, smartphones are smart devices, frequently have assistants like Alexa, Google Assistant, Cortana, Siri, et cetera. And assistants can help with answering questions and completing tasks like making calls or sending texts. So examples of that of what Alexa can do include 
reminders, alarms, timers, setting appointments in your calendar, creating lists, managing events, making phone calls and messages, emails, dropping in, which is essentially connecting to someone without an answer. So it's great if you have um, an uh, elderly parent or a baby, it can be used like a baby monitor essentially um, without someone connecting, without someone having to answer. And you can get everyday info, flash briefings. You can order your products from Amazon. You can access NFB Newsline. You can do simple routines like turn on smart home devices, turn off uh, lights, what have you. And you can also use the Alexa Show to identify different objects that you show the device. Going on to voice labeling systems, we have the Pen Friends. This is a pen shaped audio labeler. Um, so it lets you label anything with discrete audio labels and it plays your audio recording with the tap of the pen to the label. And you can add up to 250 hours of recordings. Now, however, there is a smartphone app that does something similar to this called the Way Around app. So it's used on the smartphone as a smart assistant to provide information on everyday things using what they call Way Tags. Sim similar to these labels, you simply tap your phone to the tag and have the information you had input be read aloud. Um, so different kinds of way tags are, they can come as stickers, magnets, buttons, and clips. So say you have a canned good that you know expires at a certain date, you can tie, a, you can put a rubber band around the canned good, clip, uh, put the clip on the rubber band, and with the recording say, um, this is a can of baked beans that expires on June 2021. And last but not least, we have TV accessibility. So examples of TV accessibility include audio description. And so audio description, if you've never heard of it, it's available on a multitude of streaming devices, um, streaming services, as well as with primetime TV. There's a website I call the Audio Description Project. You really just have to Google Audio Description Project, or there's you can uh, go to it at adp.acb.org. And so what that is, is it has all of the different TV shows and streaming services and all of the different um, shows that have uh, audio description. And so what audio description is, uh, so say you're watching a movie with someone and someone is giving a very important speech. And in the background, there's someone giving them bunny ears um, or doing funny things in the background and the audience is laughing. However, you have no idea why everyone is laughing because you cannot see the person in the background doing the funny things to make everyone laugh. And say you're relying on other people that you watch TV with to tell you what's going on. Audio description takes all of that issue, takes that issue away from you and will tell you, have the TV program tell you what you need to know. So it will say, Johnny is giving an important speech while Vanessa stands in the back and gives him bunny ears. And that's just an example of audio description. So with TV accessibility, there's also TV screen reading and remotes. Um, if you're unable to do uh, read the cable guide, many cable providers have, or many providers have remotes with voice control capabilities or large button remotes like Xfinity. In the lower right corner, there's an example of the Xfinity large button remote. Um, and smart TVs and devices also provide screen reading of TVs. So for example, Samsung TV has a voice guide that can do things like read um, your uh, TV's guide. So there's many cable providers that have large print and braille options as well for bills. And, and yeah, so that's pretty much all that I've got. Uh, I know that was a lot, but if anyone has any questions about any of these devices, please um, feel free to type them in the chat or, or let me know. Um, yeah. Yes, that is a wealth of knowledge, but all of it can be put, put to good use. Um, so we do have a question for you, Patrick. What's um, PCR? And then that's the first part of the question. The second part uh, is CC, and I'm assuming that person is referring to closed captioning. So mainly, 
what is PCR? Okay, so I think they meant OCR, and OCR is it stands for Orient uh, Optical Character Recognition, and really that just means your device will take a photo of the printed text that it has in front of it, and is capable of scanning it into itself and reading it aloud. And so uh, then the CC, I think they meant um, CCTV. So a CCTV stands for closed circuit television. Um, many times people hear of that only with security cameras, uh, but these devices are also known as closed circuit televisions because they're fully one unit with the video camera attached to the same monitor. I just wanted to also point out what the library offers. Um, number one, an extensive collection of large print books. Uh, two, we have a lot of the uh, services available and platforms in our e-library, and they offer text-to-speech for many of our library resources. And then we also have the Talking Book Program. We can subscribe people to the Talking Book Program for people who cannot read traditional print. And this program is available at no cost from the Illinois State Library and its partners. People that are eligible for the service would receive talking books on cartridges like this and a player at no cost. And then, you know, we offer so much here at the library and so much uh, is offered by the Lighthouse. But um, last, I love little playaways. You get a whole book on a little uh, device like this that is smaller than a half sandwich. You supply your own headphones. So um, please contact us if you have further questions. Um, one last question, Patrick, do you recommend different color contrasts? For instance, white on black, black on white, uh, I think you told me once that it's easier to read white on black for some people. Uh, yeah, so it really varies person by person. One thing that we, I, I have noticed over the years, although this is not to say if you have macular degeneration, you have to like uh, white on black. Um, it, it, I have noticed that people with macular degeneration tend to do better with a, a white text on a black background. Um, so the dark mode features that's been coming about these days by many different programs, although it's been a neat feature for people that are fully sighted, um, it's a very critical for feature for people with um, low vision. Well, thank you so much. Do we have any further questions? I guess I will say if anyone is interested in um, financing options, we have three different financing options. One of them is layaway, so we offer up to six month layaway. The second is an option called care credit, which is one that's used um, also in dentist offices, if you've ever seen it. It is, a, you, you do a soft credit check and are able to get um, however much money you apply for. And from there, you have an APR of about 27%, but you have up to 16 months of deferred payment to be able to pay it off. With uh, the third option is Sunbit. You get up to $4,500 in credit. Um, you don't have to use it all. And then um, your payment uh, plan is based on your soft credit check. So you get your APR is anywhere from zero to 27% and your down payment is anywhere from zero to $1,000 on day of purchase. And you can get 12, 18 or 24 months financing. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you again. This is a wealth of information, like I said, and the program will be available on YouTube. And please contact us if we can be of any help to you. Of course, and yeah, all of these devices are able to be uh, shown for demonstration within the Chicago Lighthouse. Um, and there are plenty more. <laughs>